OK, so um, uh, I'll be able to get a little bit into splitting and separation here uh, just in the last few minutes in number 29. Um, <clears throat> and that's one of the last uh, topics uh, that we have uh, in this class. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of continuing this, this sort of review of the theme of, you know, what can we, you know, we've learned a lot about, about migrating zero offset data, especially, you know, simple data sets like, simple but very, very good and very interesting data sets like chirp data, okay? You know, what other kinds of data sets can we apply what we've learned to? So here's one example. What if we have a 3D zero offset survey? And of course, you know, we, we, have, um, uh, we have lots of, uh, of uh, 3D surveys. Um, and uh, they can, if they're marine surveys, they, they often stack quite well. And we can, we can produce a, uh, a 3D stack data volume. Okay. So that's uh, that's pretty common, and then the, the next question is going to be okay. That's uh, you know that's zero offset data, that's stack data. You know the 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 dipping reflections are out of place. They need to be migrated. Okay. So uh, you know now we have a wave field that is in X, it's in Z, it's in T, it's also in Y now. And uh, okay, here we go. Um, it's also in Y now. So uh, we've got um, uh, an additional dimension over what we, what we had. Uh, you know, maybe we have velocity that varies with depth. Uh, and we're, we, you know, we, might still, we might come up with a way of allowing velocity to vary laterally in X and Y slowly. Okay. Uh, uh, and we have zero offset, H equals zero. Okay. So that's the way to represent this uh, wave field. Um, and um, we want to uh, we want to downward continue it. Use the exploiting reflector model, which we still can. Um, you know, so here's an exploiting reflector with its spherical waves coming out, uh, at least in constant velocity. Okay, and here's the uh, uh, the Dave Brown paper. He's another Clairbout uh, graduate that uh, uh, gives the uh, uh, the essence of, of this. Um, so let's let's take the uh, um, let's take the the zero the 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 simple assumption. You know, let's let's take constant velocity. Okay, how can we migrate such such three D data? You know, and and this is still true. You know, maybe uh, maybe the data set is is way too large to be uh, to be shoved through a uh, a three D Fourier transform. Right? We we could migrate that data set with a three D. Um, with a with a three D uh, uh, stolt migration, but but maybe that's you know that's just too heavy handed. That's too ham fisted. That's not gonna you know that's not gonna give us the details that we that we want. We gotta you know what if we want to take two D sections individually and and you know we could uh, uh, you know we we could create such things as. Uh, uh, we could create a set of slices, you know, say in the x direction, you know, the inline slices. We could create a set of cross line slices, you know, maybe each one is, each set is is way too large to uh, um, uh, to put in memory all at once. You know, we've got a, uh, you know, maybe each set is uh, is a couple terabytes. Um, you know, the whole data set is a couple of terabytes, but. Uh, uh, you know, we could we could deal with migrating two D slices, right? Um, and and if we could migrate two D slices, uh, then maybe that would be a whole lot easier than than trying to do you know one big uh, stolt migration or or actually uh, you know try to migrate the whole thing in three D all at once. You know, like with a three D uh, extrapolator. You know, a three D praxial wave extrapolator. Uh, okay, so what what you know what's the basis of what we're going to try to do? So let me remind you about the fifteen degree praxial extrapolator, right? In in retarded time, so it's as simple as possible. 
So it's d squared q dz dt is equal to v over 2 times d squared q dx squared. Okay, the subscripts are, are derivatives here. Uh, now, for 3D data, okay, uh, it looks like this. It's the same, uh, you know, the, the, the thing that's changed is that we have to add the, uh, the uh, y direction second derivative. Okay. And, and if you go back, you know, you can go all the way back to the wave equation, you can go all the way back and write a 3D um, dispersion relation, and you can do all the same approximations that we, that we did to derive our 15 degree praxial strap later for 2D, and, and this is how it'll come out. Okay? Um, so it's uh, notice that it's not, uh, uh, you know, we're just we're we're actually adding those those derivatives. We're recognizing, oh, the derivative in the x direction is really just a partial derivative. We've got to completely add the derivative in the y direction. Okay, the second derivative. So so it's like it's just pasted on. Okay, uh, you know, it's still multiplied by v over two as well. Uh, you know, for constant velocity. So we could we could trans we can transform this into the kx ky and omega domain, and and here's our you know in the uh, uh, in the frequency and and uh, in the in the and the two directions of k do domain, you know here's our here's our uh, uh, downward continuation which we could develop into a three D phase shift migration, okay. So we take the surface data, we downward continue to the to some level z by multiplying by e to the power of minus i times v divided by two omega times the quantity k squared, kx squared plus ky squared times z. Okay, the amount of uh, downward continuation. So uh, you know we could we as long as we can transform you know the whole three D data volume and I showed you how that's possible. It's it's maybe a little painful, but it's possible, right? Uh, and this is a small data set anymore. So you know it's four gigabytes, and um, that's still you know given that that you know uh, this machine has uh, has sixteen gigs of RAM, and um, the operating system will only let you use. Uh, um, Half of it for your own data. So right there, you know, I'm I'm like I'm I'm at half the limit of even of my brand new machine. Okay, so uh, you know, and, and this is not that big a 3D data set, right? Um, so so we're uh, um, uh, you know we're uh, uh, we're still pushing uh, uh, pushing our you know we're 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 going to get in, in computational trouble here pretty quickly. So the strategy is uh, let's pick out one plane of the volume in uh, at constant y, and and so whatever slopes there are across x, we'll migrate that, and then we we take that you know we assemble we reassemble the partially migrated volume the the migrated in x, and we pull out slices at constant x, and we migrate you know the dips in the y direction, okay. You know, is could we do that? Could we do essentially nothing but two D migration here, and uh, and achieve the same thing as three D migration? Okay. I mean, on the face of it, uh, you know, the I mean, I mean, strictly, no, it's not going to be the same. Uh, so, how close can we get? You know, can we get close enough with this much more efficient procedure? You know. Um, you know, once I've got the data sorted into uh, into cross line slices, then it's really no problem to you know I, I'll just bring um, you know each slice in uh, in off my uh, 32 gig uh, memory stick, and and very fast uh, migrate it in two dimensions and put it back on the memory stick. So you know, not a not a big deal. Okay. So so our whole 3D migration routine, you know, could it become Nothing but successive 2D migrations. Okay, we know how to do those 2D migrations already. There's another advantage, right? Aside from the sorting of the data, right? We, uh, uh, you know, we could just use our existing migration programs, whether it be Stolt or 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 finite difference migration, you know, or Kirchhoff sum. Uh, we don't even have to extend our codes to do this. Okay, 
you know, we've got to handle the transpose operations, but uh, uh, but we've got some hints about that too. All right. What I'm going to tell you um, in in a, a when I finish this lecture uh, 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 in a uh, in an online post, um, I'll tell you that that yes, this is possible, and uh, all we have to do is show the validity of dividing our three D extrapolator into two directions of two D extrapolators. Okay, um, and and the question that I want you to consider. In the in the meantime, uh, is um, you know, could you do this for a? You know, let's say all you want to do with a three D data set is is an FFT. You want a three D FFT. Okay, does it work to to divide it up into into um, successive two D FFTs in both directions? Okay, and and uh, so if you consider that question, you'll see why this could potentially work. Uh, for uh, for migration, okay. So I got to thank you for uh, uh, for uh, putting up with this class, and um, I'm going to.